I'm Corey Kukuru for 1623 Studios, and this is the story of Anasquam Village. Along the western edge of Gloucester that's detached from mainland Massachusetts, Squam was first inhabited by indigenous Pawtucket, then Algonquin, who had mostly friendly yet wary encounters with European navigators like Samuel de Champlain and Captain John Smith, before disease and migration left little more than relics and sacred sites as evidence of their presence. In 1631, the first non-native settlement at Squam Harbor occurred, a bare-bones fishing port that dotted the peninsula with docks and platforms for drying fish known as flakes. In those early years before Gloucester was incorporated, Squam was the region's main commercial center for fishing and farming. How Anasquam got its name is debatable. It's most likely an Algonquian term meaning end of the marsh, the marsh being the vast wetlands that stretch from modern-day Maine to Cape Ann. However, in the earliest maps of Cape Ann, the words Annis and Squam are separated. Annis may come from Charles Annis, the son of a soldier from Enniskillen, Ireland, who fled from Protestant persecution to Newburyport in 1662, then built a home and started a family somewhere near Squam Harbor. The cozy, insulated headland soon became populated with pious, industrious townsfolk with the foresight and drive to establish the village concept. Annisquam, tucked neatly behind Lobster Cove, quietly remained self-sustaining, almost independent from Gloucester. By land, the entrance to Annisquam is the village church, established as Gloucester's third parish in 1728. Directly across the small peninsula rests the Annisquam Harbor Light Station. It was built in 1801 with a $2,000 grant from Congress to help mariners navigate into and out of the four and a half mile saltwater estuary known as Annisquam River. Despite enduring over 200 years of harsh New England weather, the original wooden light keeper's house still stands as it did then. In 1830, Epps Davis, a devout Baptist, wished for a congregation separate from the non-denominational village church. Davis was a prominent landowner and shipwright. A replica of his schooner fame still sails in Salem. He was also a fledgling minister who constructed a simple structure in the heart of Annisquam to preach. For a while it worked. But the Panic of 1837, a long-lasting national economic depression that closed half of America's banks, hit hard. Enterprising squammers took to shipbuilding and granite quarrying in order to stay afloat, but many went poor. A women's benevolence group called the Anasquam Sewing Circle was formed to raise money for needy neighbors. But Davis's finances were ruined. His building was auctioned off. It was later named Washingtonian Hall, after a movement started by recovering drinkers in the nation's capital. Washingtonian Hall continued as a meeting house and began to serve a variety of important purposes for the village. Eventually, shops, eateries, and a sail loft were housed there. Locals then referred to it as Mechanics Hall. An annual festival called Seafair started there in 1846. For a short time, it was the home of Gloucester's first high school, promising both boys and girls an idyllic setting for a Boston education. For decades, the hall also served as the post office. Davis's provision store, with its restaurant and soda fountain, was the place to be. In the 1850s, a stagecoach began running from Gloucester Harbor to Annisquam, a popular transport for locals traveling to and from the working waterfronts. Willows planted along either side of Washington Street by Goose Cove absorbed water to allow safe passage. The road at Willow Rest was also part of an eye-popping scene at the dawn of the Civil War. A rally for presidential hopeful Abraham Lincoln inspired a huge torchlight procession from downtown Gloucester to the village hall. Burning barrels of tar placed along the roadsides in Riverdale marked the parade route. One overzealous campaigner fell through the floorboards of the Annisquam footbridge over Lobster Cove. The rickety walkway was replaced shortly after Lincoln's inauguration, complete with a drawbridge. Easier access to the Squam brought a new element, wealthy summer residents from Boston and beyond, who introduced a serious devotion to the arts. In 1863, in the midst of the Civil War, a group of youngsters organized a dramatics club at the hall and put on a play to raise money for the Union. More elaborate productions were staged as charity drives to sustain the village's dearest buildings. The shows were so successful that the actors became locally famous, performed at other venues around Cape Ann, and attracted notable thespians and playwrights. The Annisquam Village Players continues to this day, with shows indoors and outdoors at the Village Hall, making it one of, if not the, longest continuously running community theaters in the country. By the 20th century, Annisquam transformed into a quiet destination for accomplished artists. 
To preserve the village center, year-round and seasonal residents formed an association to purchase the hall and care for adjacent buildings. Many convened at the newly built yacht club and attended regattas at Cambridge and Lighthouse Beaches, as well as tea parties at the hall's library. Several noteworthy painters taught at their summer studios. Arthur Fiedler and the Boston Symphony Orchestra presented a raucous pop concert to serious fanfare. But the most famous composition rooted in Anasquam came from Broadway producer Russell Krauss. From his summer home, Krauss and longtime writing partner Howard Lindsay adapted for stage The Story of the Trap Family Singers. The Sound of Music dominated showbiz during the golden age of musical theater and is one of the most celebrated franchises in entertainment history. Today, Anasquam remains a quintessential New England village steeped in its traditions. Much of the landscape and residential architecture is unchanged. The sewing circle and civics club still thrive. The seafair and village players carry on as they did nearly two centuries ago. The old firehouse is now home to the historical society. The village hall holds the library and auditorium. The schoolhouse is a gallery and consignment shop that, what else, supports the preservation of the cluster of buildings that have bonded squammers forever and continues to define the self-reliant seaside community.